Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Dungeon Meshi episode number 2 reaction. Okay, in the previous episode it was the beginning of the show and uh, we get introduced to a world where quite a few things are kind of like a little bit different from the normal JRPGs. I guess it's kind of the same with a few of the other JRPGs. Um, there is in this world there is obviously like dungeons and monsters and they give us like a little explanation of how the dungeon came into being that legend about that king and all of that and the dungeons like monsters are like come out from the dungeons and they've made the dungeon like a little bit of like a business opportunity you know where they go and like kill monsters get the materials sell you know normal jrpg stuff however there's one interesting thing about this world that is there is resurrection people can cause resurrection so death isn't really the end uh if you can recover the body though so what happens is the the main character, I think his name was Laios, uh, his sister gets eaten by a dragon and now they have to go and save her before she gets digested because if she gets digested, she cannot be resurrected. So that's why and however, like later on that guy, the Senshi, he came and he did tell us that, you know, dragons take a long time to digest so it'll be fine for a while and now they're off on their journey to get the sister back and also to save money, they are eating. <laughs> <laughs> stuff made from monsters they're going inside the dungeon like hunting the monsters getting ingredients from the dungeon and making food and since she is like a veteran in that and Laios also wants to learn more about this um and while the other two they're like you know like the girl i forgot the girl's name she's very like not happy about this however since the food is delicious she's kind of going along with it <laughs> and uh, you know it's like like an interesting like a slice of life type of like a show uh cooking related show which you know makes ingredients like makes monster monsters the ingredients so let's see what happens in today's episode episode number um two let us begin i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it whichever is a preference and let's begin okay here's the countdown three two one go I love how we're getting more bump of chicken songs in openings. We used to get them a lot, but then I don't think there was like a certain amount of time when there wasn't any opening bump of chicken med made. And now we're getting them back again in Spy Family in this one. So yeah. <clears throat> no, that's her mother. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she's I was like she's dreaming, isn't she? Bruh. <laughs> Wait, is today his her birthday or something? Um It tastes good. You know. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, they're not properly using. 
Yeah, there you go. What about fresh ingredients? Yes. <laughs> so we should eat monsters. Oh, okay. So we need more. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Okay. What? Yeah, what? Oh, oh, it's, it's a manticore. No. No, Kim, oh, b b Basilix. Wait, aren't... Yeah, but you'll get petrified before you're... <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, cockatrice. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's the eggs. Oh. They look like beans, you know? Big beans. Yeah, like kid. Ugh. Wait, you're. You guys are robbing her kids. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, it's a different. Okay. Damn. Bruh. Because you have the egg with you. Oh, no. He's gonna get pissed. Yep. You should have hidden the egg in your bag or something. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh my god. Wait, aren't... Ah, uh, I see, that makes sense. Wait, aren't basilisks the ones who petrify when they look at... So these ones don't petrify. Do I have an antidote? Yeah, okay, nice. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Bro, there's someone dying almost and we're... <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's like making roasted, yeah. But it's just chicken, yeah. It really is just chicken. <laughs> oh boy. Well, yeah. Why is he eating with a four? Oh, because it's on the plate. But. <laughs> <laughs> we 
three months, not much. <laughs> well, experience, you know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Okay. She's <laughs> struggling to come down. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> wow. Mm, vegetables, yeah. Oh my god. Aren't mandrakes those ones? Like the ones that scream? Yeah, I think it's those ones, aren't they? That screams. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. The ones that scream. Yeah. What? Won't the dog die then? Yeah. Hello? Uh, yeah. Like, it just... Don't you have like a... Like a deafening spell? Like that deafens... Oh yeah, that is true. <laughs> that you know what? That's actually smart. I I also didn't think about it. <laughs> That's weird. Why? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, it doesn't scream that much. <laughs> <laughs> that was her. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Come on, just... <laughs> yeah, the do Why? Oh, I guess you can use monster, yeah. No, they're just gonna take the mandrake with them and fly away. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I feel like the bat is just going to run, like, fly away with the mandrake, and they're not going to get it. Okay, don't burn the rope. Oh my god. Oh no, take, okay, okay. Oh, there's more of them! Oh, there's more! Oh, there you go. 
I thought it would be big. They're just gonna fly away with the thing. Oh, okay, okay, you know what? Okay, I guess it might die before flying away. Oh! <coughs> Bruh. But <laughs> oh no, there you go. Yeah, I guess we, I guess we did get one. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Keep talking to her. <laughs> oh no yeah oh my god he's gonna eat them bad wouldn't he hmm Your face. No, she snapped out of it. <laughs> Are we going to eat that as well? Oh, my God. Yeah, because it's a... Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, really? That's funny. Damn, that actually looks good. <laughs> Even though it's made from... Okay. It's a, it's a bit bigger because, you know, it has a head in it. Maybe hers one stays better because it has the head in it. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Then the book... Yeah, the book was correct, and she was correct as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh boy. What? Oh, I, I see. That's why. I was like, he was going to. No. Oh, nice. There you go. <clears> hmm. <throat> Hmm. He's a professional. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Ooh, there might be traps here. Yep. Right. Oh. Oh my god! Ah! Uh. <laughs> His legs are so big! <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, he deliberately did that. Wow. But <laughs> oh no, he's <laughs> he's taking out making yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna use that. Sure. <laughs> <Yo. laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> True. Yeah, fair enough, you know, because obviously. Oh no. <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> it's a volume oil. <laughs> Damn. Oh, my God. Ah, he's, he's used to it. Damn. <laughs> uh. I see. <laughs> what? Okay. Nice. Yeah, he did say that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you think that the chop meat? Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow, I love how they are, they're so like elaborate about this, showing us how they do it, even though everything is like monstrous. I guess if you just replace the stuff that they're using with normal stuff, you can make food according to the recipe. Instead of mandrake, I guess you can use potatoes or something, maybe, I don't know, like, or something else, maybe. Oh my god, hey! 
it burnt <clears throat> Yeah, but you're the, you know, you're the one who cooks. Yeah. Nice. Mandrake and bat kaki age. <laughs> Marcel's face. Hmm. <laughs> Convenient room. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that is true. He did teach him. Like, I was going to say... <clears throat> wow. What a nice analogy. <clears throat> Yeah, this is the ending. Damn. <clears throat> hey, there's a pig. <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> Among the sheep. Yeah, those two were their former party members. Those two. The samurai guy and the, the big girl. Okay, that is it for this episode. <clears throat> Alright, you know what? This is so interesting how they're just showing like the whole process of how they're making the food. Like, you know, like every cooking anime does this, you know, be it Shokugeki no Soma or some other cooking anime. They <clears throat> kind of show like, oh, these are the ingredients you need. This is how you cook it. You do this, that, you know, this is the temperature. This is the amount of time you should fry it, this and that. You know, the specifics. They tell all of that. And they give us, like, the recipe of how to do it. And <clears throat> every anime does it. Every cooking anime does it. It's not a new thing. But the funny thing is that they're doing the same for, like, imaginary ingredients. Because Mandrake, you know, it's not a real thing. Or is it? I don't know. Wait, no. Mandrake isn't a real thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it said... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, stuff like basilisk's egg and stuff. Yeah, you could replace them with stuff, I guess. You know, instead of basilisk egg, you can use a normal egg. Um, instead of mandrake, I guess you could uh, use like some kind of a, like, you know, like potato or something, you know, to make the fry. Um, in, instead of using like, you know, all the other stuff that they were using, you know, you can replace it with stuff, I guess. However, you know, what they're using here is definitely imaginary stuff. So I love how they're still elaborating on how to do it and even showing how you're doing it. And yeah, so it, like you cannot really make this food unless and until you like replace the 
imaginary or myth like you know like the fantastical ingredients with actual ingredients but still they're like going into so details i like that but again like i said i guess you can replace this instead of the stuff they're using you can use something similar to that in the real world and make an actual you know like a like like a dish so i guess that's why they're kind of going into more details about it i like that you know like the the fact that this is like actual monster in and like you know like ingredients from the dungeon <laughs> it's, it's interesting to see what they're going to cook every like you know episode and how they're cooking it <clears throat> so this episode was like a two section episode the first section was them making like a basilisk um like like food or like wait a minute what did they make at the beginning just a minute um they made like a like a uh like an egg you know like uh, what do you call them? Uh, um, omurais, you know, like omurais kind of thing they kind of made uh, using those ingredients. And then the next section was them talking about traps and how to cook, stuff like that. Now, you know, uh, there was like a very interesting section in the final part of the episode where we get to see how uh, Chilchak was not really happy about the fact that... <clears throat> You know, like, obviously, like, she said that don't try to do the stuff that I'm doing. I'm the expert in that. I am going to do stuff that I'm good at. You do stuff that you are good at. That is cooking. So Don't try to, like, you know, like, do the stuff that I am doing because you're not that experienced in it. You might hurt yourself. Not only that, the fact, you know, in the end, he decided to teach him about how to, like, you know, like, uh, like you know, like, disarm traps and stuff. It's... I actually thought that he wasn't going to do it or teach him because, you know, technically that is his profession. It's basically you're teaching someone else how to do something that you're good at and that you're using to make, like, you know, like to, to be useful and gain money. You know, like, like being like a, someone who, like, disarms traps and like, you know, this type of thing in a dungeon, that's like his profession. So it's as if like a chef is teaching you his ingredient, like you know his secret recipes or something like that. Something like that he basically did. But at, again, you know, it is pretty, I guess, fair because he, like Senshi, also taught him how to cook. You know, so it's a fair exchange. You know, he taught him how to cook, how to do stuff like that, while he was like you know like he he taught him how to disarm the traps. And obviously, Senshi is not going to like like this is a thing. You know. Um, I guess it is like people don't like sharing their recipe to other people because obviously if you are in that profession, you know, they, if you like share it with someone else and if they're in the same profession as well, they'll like, you know, like obviously that will be like something bad. Like you're literally giving you your secret ingredient and they might use that to profit off from it and maybe kind of surpass you in the future. You know, so it's like a, like in in professional way it's like a bad move however teaching it to someone who's not really in that type of profession and who's just going to use it for normal stuff is pretty okay in my opinion because you know like he taught senshi how to disarm the traps and he's teaching him all of that obviously senshi is not going to become like a professional like you know like 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 him like he won't really change his profession from a chef to someone who does this so it's fine he's just going to use it for normal stuff for like disarming small little traps so that he can make better food. Similarly, how, when Senshi taught him to cook, you know, it's fine for him as well because he's not really going to become a chef. He'll keep continuing being this person who goes into the dungeons and disarms traps and stuff. So it's fine. So teaching all of these things to each other just as a casual way, it's okay. You know, but I guess it would have been a problem if they were like in the, in the same profession then there would be like a little bit of a competition. But it's fine. Both of them are in different, completely different sections and professions. And they don't really, you know, like it doesn't really matter if you teach the other person what you do. Um, and it was fair because, you know, since she taught him how to cook, it was fair for him as well to teach him how to disarm the traps. Because, you know, as he said, when he's going to leave the party, you know, these type of things they won't, he won't be able to do, which is a shame, you know. Um, so yeah, so it, it was nice in the end, you know, that was like a nice little section. Um, <clears throat> while the first section was obviously the whole basilisk situation. Now, 
okay this is interesting you know i love how there's so many different variations to this whole chimera manticore basilisk this type of things because at first i was like wait a minute is that a manticore but i guess not because manticores i think manticores are like a lion um snake and i think bat isn't it you know what let me check manticore is a uh, um no man oh that's why manticore oh i see head of a man body of a lion tail of a dragon or a scorpion i see wait really i i thought they had like wings as well yeah they have wings interesting so that's a manticore okay chimera is basically like a goat i think um yeah a lion a goat and uh, a snake is it i think wait a minute uh two different sets of yeah i think so like a goat a lion and a snake yeah so it's so interesting that like you know like these like i always mix this up every single time i just mix this up somehow like chimera manticore and uh, like an and, bas and basilisk wait a minute is this really what a basilisk is i thought up until now i thought basilisk is just like a snake let me just check uh legendary reptile serpent king oh there are variations i think hybrid no no there you go hybrid between a chicken and a serpent interesting i up until now i just thought like basilisk are just like a snake you know like a big snake or something like that um but i guess there are variations chicken and there. and then again another one which is cockatrice cockatrice is also something similar let me check cockatrice is also something similar which is just like a chicken with like a like a dragon wings or something wow there's so variations to it and each has like a different name it always confuses me <laughs> and i don't know why like wait a minute doesn't basilisk's um uh, gaze petrify you uh, petrify yeah catching a glance of it will cause uh yeah petrification or paralysis so i don't think they showed that here i was thinking they were going to bring that up here and they're going to get petrified or something that didn't really happen the the the, the snake and the chicken were literally looking at them none of them got petrified so i guess they didn't really add that um so that was that you know there was another interesting thing in the end of this episode is where senshi says that oh um the tail is actually the chicken it took me a while for that to register in my head i'm like what is he even saying the tail is the chicken and <laughs> i'm like how well, the tail is the snake isn't it but then it little by little registered i'm like oh i see so the tail is the chicken so the head is the serpent and the tail is the chicken <laughs> that's funny okay oh boy I, that actually like took me a while for me to register that in my head i was like what is he even saying <laughs> right anyways um and uh, yeah so there you go that was this episode great episode um it's very fun and very chill you can see it's like a very slice of lifey type of show with you know like you know in like cooking and stuff so it's it's very interesting it's, it's like a new concept i guess um so yeah let's see what happens like further onwards okay now that was my overall impressions i'm going to talk about this episode scene by scene now in the first section we get to see <laughs> marcia <laughs> having a dream of her mom cooking her favorite food in her birthday and lo and behold she wakes up and sees it's inside the she's inside the freaking dungeon with the, the <laughs> with her teammates making food from monsters and she's like what the hell and she actually woke up from the smell of um like another party making like food now wait a minute i was like yeah there were like five people in their party did they, all the other run away i think so all of the others ran away and the two the two that were left in the end they got entangled with the basilisk um okay so anyways marcel woke up and marcel sees everyone like eating like food like actual food not monster food she's like what the hell is this like you know like 
like they're having so like you know so much good food and we're here he chomping on monsters i want to have some actual food while senshi is like in the completely opposite direction he's like completely um not happy about the fact that kids nowadays are just having food which is just you know stuff like this and they get malnutrition because of this we need actual proper food um and then he also kind of says like but that saying like we also don't really eat that proper like nutrition filled food so like you know we need something better some better ingredients you know and uh, he also explains how marsha's body probably wants fat that is why she's craving stuff like that and uh, you know this is a very interesting thing i never really thought about it like that and it kind of like struck me um when i heard another person talking about this in youtube some other person um that is like sometimes you know you have this urge to eat something like oh i want to eat something sweet oh i want to eat something like oily you know like that happens to me you know i'm sure that happens to everybody you know i never really thought about it but i heard someone talk about that in youtube and he he said that it happens because your food actually craves for that you know uh, your body actually craves for that and you're like lacking in that you know maybe for like you know for a couple of days you haven't really had that thing um so your body craves for it and y- usually in those type of situations or times you should listen to it you know it'll make you happy obviously and it'll also provide your body with that food and he says the same thing here as well senchi he says that you know maybe you had that dream and everything because you want your body craving fat so you know let's get some um actual fatty food today <laughs> So anyways um <laughs> so they like goes out and like Senshi and uh, Laios are talking about what they should make today and they're like all right are you thinking what i'm thinking and then he's like yes we need to get a basilisk <coughs> so <laughs> okay so and obviously Laios's uh, explanation is like it's just a chicken you know like like half of it is chicken so it's a chicken <laughs> and uh, I like how he says that I used to think it was cooler when more species are mixed together. Um but with only two types they bring out each other's strengths. Right. <laughs> right. Anyways. So they're like, okay, so there's a basilisk's nest. So let's go and get some eggs. So they go in, grab the eggs and the eggs are like, you know, snake eggs, they're like slimy and like, you know, rubbery and soft. Um I I didn't know this but I've heard I can I've seen like in in I think you know like television like like yeah snake eggs are like that I think like a rubbery kind of like you know soft kind of now I think about it it's kind of like you know weird like you know like because we're accustomed to like hard shelled eggs so having like a soft egg which kind of like you know it's like squishy it's kind of a weird thought I don't know. <laughs> it feels weird like you know like thinking about it but anyways um So they grab some eggs and so here they suddenly see the cockatrice is getting going crazy they're trying to attack these two party the, these two people you know the party members that we saw before i'm guessing all the others either died or they ran away either of it i'm guessing they probably ran away because if they died they'd probably mention it um later on the fact that they never mentioned anything about the other party members probably means that they ran away So these two were like unfortunate enough to get stuck here. Um this elf that's an elf isn't it? That the girl, the blonde haired girl. Wait a minute, let me check. Let me look at her ears. I think her ears are pointed, isn't it? Wait a minute. Where is that part? Um yeah, the, her ears are pointed. That's an elf. Okay. Um So <laughs> the guy almost dies. you know the the girl is like scared and everything that the basilisk is there and then the suddenly the basilisk looks at marcial and sees that she has their their eggs with her so the basilisk starts <laughs> chasing marcial however lies to the rescue he comes in and starts screaming at the basilisk <laughs> like an <laughs> doing that whole <laughs> impression of like an spreading her arms and legs out um, i think wait a minute isn't this the way you scare away some bears i think isn't it like i've heard like there's some bears that you should do that and there's some bears you should just play dead you know 
I think like there's like a brown and a black bear. Like they're like difference. Like one of the bears is something you should like just play dead. And another bear is where you should like try to like act like a big I, I don't know, like I've heard, I don't remember it. Anyways, um so he does that while uh Senshi comes in from the back and the snake puts his attention on Senshi while the chicken puts their attention on Laios. And it gets confused, you know, since it has like, you know, like it's trying to process both things. So that's the time when they go and attack it and kill it. So there you go, you know, mission accomplished. Um, so <laughs> the guy th that got hit is dying. And Senshi's like, don't worry, I'll cook the food. It has antidote in it. Don't worry about it. And they start cooking. And obviously they show the whole process, like, you know, like, it's like a normal way you cook, like roast chicken, just take the feathers out, you know, like cut the chicken. And obviously here you had to cut out the snake part, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, they kind of roast it, like kind of season it with some stuff and roast it. And then I think like, wait a minute, they cooked the snake as well, didn't they? I think so. Anyways, they feed it to him and uh, the guy, like, you know, it has antidote in it, so the guy survives. Um, and then Martial puts healing spell on him. And obviously these two are very impressed. They're like, like, guys, you're so great, you know, like, like, we're just new to this. We're like three months in it. And every time challenging the same section, we, we get de defeated. So can you tell me what is the secret to be so strong that you can actually kill the monsters and cook them as food? <laughs> and then she's like, oh, three things. Um, proper food. Um, wait a minute. Let me see. Improve your diet. Yeah. Then engage in proper exercise. And another one is... Improve your diet. Rethink your circadian rhythm. What does that mean? I have no idea. And engage in proper exercise. <laughs> he kind of reminded me of Saitama here, like, you know, 100 push-ups, 100, <laughs> 100 uh, sit-ups and 10 kilometers run, bruh. Anyways, um, they say goodbye and yeah, there you go, they go back, I'm guessing. Now, after that, we see that Martial is kind of struggling to come down and she's just, you know, completely, like, sad about the fact that she's not really coming, of becoming of any help. So she tries to like show her usefulness and they're like, all right, you know what? Um, we're going to need some vegetables. So let's get some mandrakes. And she's like, oh, I can do that. I'm good at that. So she does everything like based on what was written in the book. And in the book, it was written to use a dog to take out the mandrakes. So when it screams, you know, it, it, you know, like they are safe. But then the freaking dog will die. Like, what the hell? Like, you just bring a dog just to kill it like that? Like, that is just so, like, you know, yeah, in no way you can do that. And that's why she never really used it before, because she always hesitated about the fact that the dog will die. Um, so, and they're like, come on, like, you know, like, it's just too much, isn't it? Like, it's like a too roundabout way, and then, like, the dog will also die. They were not happy about this whole process. And then she just comes, grabs it, takes it out, and like you know, before it takes it out, just cuts it from the you know, the root because so that it dies and it never screams. This part is hilarious, you know. It took <laughs> like he does that, and the thing screams, and everyone's like, "Oh wait, that wasn't the mandrake screaming. That was actually Martial screaming." <laughs> that really that was funny because. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. She freaked out so much that she screamed at the top of her lungs. <laughs> and everyone thought it was the mandrake screaming <laughs> at the beginning. Oh my god. Anyways, so everyone's like, yeah, this is better. You know, like, where the hell will we even get a dog from and all that, you know. This is way better. Uh, but Marcel is like, come on, it's written in the book. Like, obviously, like, you know, there must be a reason why this was written in the book. So she's like, no, I cannot give up like this. I'll, I'm just going to be useless otherwise, you know, like, and she's like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to do it on my own. I'm going to use a bat, the big bats. And she puts a trap in front of the big bats, like nest, puts the other, like, you know, like 
um, ties it to the mandrake and uses the flame spell to make the man, uh, bats come out. One of the bats gets stuck into the rope, pulls the mandrake, and I was thinking like it's going to fly away with the mandrake and then never going to get it. But the mandrake starts screaming and it actually almost dies. But before dying, it just like just you know like bombarded into uh, Marcel's tower. And since the mandrake was screaming at that same time, a little bit of the scream went into like you know like Marcel's head and ears, and she kind of got a little bit you know like crazy for a moment there, like her she got like very rattled. So everyone comes to her rescue and they're like, why do you do this? And Marcel is like, oh, because, you know, like I thought I was just a burden, you know, like, and uh, she kind of explains why she did this. And she, she thought like she was afraid that she wouldn't be of any help. But they're like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, you know, like we, we didn't really want to use your help here because your magic will be useful later on in the dungeon. We cannot use, you cannot use all your magic up here and we will actually need it in the f later. You know, your magic is of very youth and uh, you know which is true you know like obviously these are like the first few levels as they go deeper and deeper they'll need Marcel's power um so Chilchak is also like I'm sorry I shouldn't have meant it like that and you know like you you are of a lot help <laughs> but anyways they did end up getting the mandrake so yeah all well and good they started cooking or since she starts cooking and uh, so they make the omurais with the mandrake that um martial brought and the other mandrake the difference when they eat it is quite prominent the one which um martial made like brought the raw material the ingredient it was a little bit less bitter so Senshi says like, oh, I see. So the reason why is it less bitter is because when I kill the mandrake before it screams, the bitterness stays in there. However, since um, Marcel used to pluck it and it screamed, the bitterness was went out with that. So that is why her method is way more better if you, are, if you want to bring out the actual taste. However, his one is efficient. However, it's not the best method. And he's like, oh, thanks for that. You know, you know what? Yeah, you and your book were actually correct in this point. You know, and I love how he's like, as a thank you, here you go, one head of the mandrake for you. <laughs> Extra one. <laughs> and she's like, I don't want this. Just let me eat something else. I don't want to eat monsters anymore. <laughs> right. And then the final section was um, the trap section where Chilchak is like, tells Senshi that don't interfere in my job we'll all die otherwise and Senshi still starts interfering because he's like and you can see he's always very efficient in everything he's like oh this is way more efficient you know I don't have like you know enough time to take like you know precaution and everything so however Senshi Chilchak is pretty pissed off he's like come on like these traps are connected to other traps as well which one which will cascade into something crazy you know like just just listen to me However, he keeps like, you know, triggering the traps. And there was like the final trap, which like, which was like fire. And he looking at the fire, he's like, oh, wait a minute. I can use this. Um, I can use the oil and this one to do like kakiyage, um, which I'm guessing means like deep fried, you know. Um, so he's like, Chilchak, tell me where the oil is. And at first, Chilchak wasn't really happy about this, but then he's like, all right, you know what? I'll give you, tell you where the oil is, and I'll also help you bring the oil out so that you can cook. However, you have to listen to me. You know, don't try to, like, you know, do things your way. And he says, like, you know, you are the expert in cooking. I never butt heads with you in, in that department. So don't try to do that with me in the department of traps. Just listen to me, you know, because I'm more expert in this. And he's like, yeah, sure, why not? Like, just let me, tell me where the oil is. So they go to that part and he disarms the trap. And he did warn him that, you know, the oil is very hot. However, he literally doesn't care. He's like, it's fine, just do it. And because we get to know later on that he doesn't really feel heat or he does feel heat, he's just used to it. You know, he just puts his hand inside the like hot oil. And he's like, oh, it's 180 degrees. <laughs> like, you know, like this, he says. Um, 
and i guess like and i've seen people like this on youtube you know like they literally put their hands in like boiling oil and they're like oh okay like it's like as if nothing <laughs> so <laughs> yeah <laughs> there you go um so right and then he's like okay um so he tells chilchak to use the traps to do different things for example the bat he was like oh you take this bat to the trap and chop it up and then he's like oh like you know like uh, use this oil and boil it with the flame and he's like giving him directions and everything and at the end of it he's like fine you know I'll, I'll do it you know and he does it while he makes the food so he tries to fry the thing in the oil however since you know this is still check he hasn't really cooked before so he messes up he like burns it so in the end senshi comes in and helps him to properly make like a little like you know, like a fried like you know like to properly fry it and it works out so in the end they make kakiyage uh what was it named and um, the bat kakiyage mandrake and bat big bat kakiyage <laughs> i love how marcel's face is just pure disgust like the thing is i feel like marcel has said this before as well it is actually tasty it's not that it, it tastes nasty or anything it is tasty but the fact that they're eating monsters is probably still like you know like bothering her so much that even if it's tasty the fact that he's she's eating monsters and like you know like stuff from the dungeon is probably kind of like you know putting her off and that's why she's making that face it's not that it's not tasty it is tasty she didn't mention it before but she cannot like digest the fact that they're eating stuff from the monsters oh my god uh anyways um so later on since she kind of says like oh it'll be such a shame when we part our ways i won't be able to like you know make stuff like this because i cannot disarm traps so in the end chill check is like all right you know what whatever i'll teach you at least a little bit so that you can do stuff like this and you did also teach me how to cook so you know it's a fair exchange so yeah there you go that's that and i like how the narrator kind of says in the end this was a very interesting analogy that the narrator make made is that bread cannot replace meat nor can meat replace bread but together they taste even better yeah both food and people remain the same ah, that was such a nice little quote in the end and there you go that was the end of this episode another fun episode of cooking monsters so there you go <laughs> so that is it that's my reaction to episode 2 of dungeon mesh if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out and that's it thanks for watching i'll see you guys uh, next week with another episode of dungeon mesh until then goodbye and have a nice day